Okay, we haven't left Florida yet, but already there's been a snake scare. That is an eastern indigo snake, which luckily is non venomous. I'm a tough person and I don't cry a lot, but leaving my baby is one of those times. Luckily, I have this one to look at me really cutely. <laughs> okay, bye boys. Love you. discussions about how certain words are pronounced based on what part of the country you live in. Like I am losing. <laughs> not because we're in the south. This is Georgia. M-A-C-O-N is not Mason, Georgia. It's bacon. Make it like bacon. C-A-R-A-M-E-L. I say that. Caramel. You say caramel? Yeah. My parents caramel. Are no, it's caramel. I can't differentiate between caramel. what is a southern thing and what is just me being weird. I don't know. What about um, C R A Y O N? Crayon. Crayon. It's not a crane. <laughs> it's a crayon. P E C A N. That's a southern one. Pecan. It's a pecan pie. Some of it is more like phrasing. Like I'm fixing to. I'm fixing to. I'm fixing to go to the store. Oh. Mash. You're gonna go mash the button on the remote. Mash the button on the remote. It's yeah. a clicker. It's, not. it's a it's a clicker. It's not. Yeah. It's not. Where's the clicker? What do you call a traffic circle? A traffic circle or a roundabout? It's the a rotary. That, no, that's the absolute wrong rotary. One. That's the only one that's. It not will right. always be a rotary. I think what you call your shoes, sneakers, is a very tennis shoes specific. Tennis shoes, running shoes, sneakers. That cute face right there. Aww. Now, I will tell you that I don't know if this is everyone in the South, but I would say a large majority of people are going to generalize anything north of Maryland as New England. That it's is all such up a north. shame. I can remember like spending summers in Michigan, and then yeah, it was awesome because you could just run around everywhere. Soft grass, bare feet. It's fantastic. Too bad they have winter. Springer Mountain, and you can see it is pouring down some rain. About to head out on our exciting adventure. I couldn't be happier. I don't even care that it's raining. It's wild. Got rain pants, rain jacket, and my NASA hat. We're ready to go. project. You need to have a lot of things like water, air, food, shelter, fun, dance songs, but most of all you need heart, you need courage. And the crazy thing about being a human being is that all of us have these hearts, which means that all of us have the great incredible capacity to face life.
courage. That's the, uh, the June project. Here we go. Your turn. Got it. Okay, you start now on our rainy first day. All right, we're one mile in, and we're just starting the AT on the top of the Springer Mountain, elevation 3782, the southern terminus in the Chattahoochee National Forest. And we're gonna be heading out again, back the way we came, and then off to our campsites for the night. It stopped raining, and it is beautiful out. And this air is so fresh, no swamp air here. This is the rhododendron tunnel. They're everywhere. Okay, here we go. First creek crossing. Oh, Mom, I know you love that sound. Is it cold? A tad? Oh. Hate wet socks. I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not, when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. I did not wish to live what was not life, living is so dear, nor did I wish to practice resignation unless it was quite necessary. I wanted to live deep and suck out all the marrow of life, to live so sturdily and Spartan-like as to put to rout all that was not life, to cut a broad swath and shave close, to drive life into a corner and reduce it to its lowest terms. Henry David Thoreau. Mm. just came out. We had a dreary first day but it was still magical because we were on the trail and it actually only rained on us for the first mile and then after that it was misty and dripping and it smelled nice and woodsy and we walked through the rhododendron forest and we got to camp and we set up our camp and now it's sunny. Oh, it's beautiful. So here we are, and I'm sending messages out on the satellite phone and trying to tell everyone we're okay, we're in for the night. We're at Stover Creek Shelter, here's the shelter. And we're gonna hang our bags in a second with um, the bear cables, which we've never done before, so I'll have to show you that. That's, they're really cool. Looks like my little food bag is gonna take an exciting trip up a high ropes course, is what it looks like. Rachel is 
uh, filtering her water right now. And she's all set up. I'm really happy the sun is out. That is so nice. Hey, Carlin. Check this out. I borrowed the hat. Beautiful out. Birds and water. There's a couple people in the shelter today, but we're just hanging out here. We're the only ones tending so far. But it's so nice that the sun came out. You can make some dinner, having pasta primavera, and some miso soup. All right, day one. Here we are on our adventure, 2018. This is the youngest and most beautiful we will ever look. I'm gonna say that quite a few times because it's literally going to be the youngest and most beautiful every time. Okay. Mom, I wish you were here. You'd love this. Okay, bye. Lesson 101, do not put your smart water bottle near your burner. So sad. This season on Footsteps in the Dirt. because we couldn't include everything that we really loved about the trail in the video part of the episode that we would add a couple of things afterwards. So if you're interested in hearing a little bit more about this story, stay tuned as we discuss what happened in episode one. Uh, so to start with, uh, what you didn't see, you only saw a very little uh, snippet of us driving to get to north of the Springer Mountain trailhead. And what you didn't see was like the 90 minute drive up the mountain. And it was all in this like, it was a forest service road, which in case you didn't know, Almost impossible. means it's not, it's not really a road. <laughs> but we didn't know that. Google Maps didn't tell me. Uh, it's I, really surprising that Google Maps didn't specify that <laughs> only certain vehicles might be able to traverse So we're in my mom's gravel road Honda, and it's a, it's a four-door sedan, I don't remember what kind, but it is not meant for four-road, like four-wheeling or off-roading. And to start going up the mountain, you basically run out of pavement at an army ranger training station yes. with like barricades and guns and lots of no trespassing signs. I loved it. And I'm like, mm, I don't know that we're in the right place. I wanted to make some friends. Um, we definitely were in the right place. Uh, so apparently the army rangers train on the mountains that we were hiking for fun. It did say um, in the guidebook, like in a couple of places, you know, either on the Gut Hooks app comments or in the guidebooks that people have run into ranger groups, but they prefer to be ignored. So we didn't yeah. see any. Yeah, well, we were again too. We loud. did hear the big um, helicopters, the big military we did. We military did. There were helicopters, a lot of weird aircraft that flew over. Um, but yeah, so just getting to the trailhead was like an adventure in itself. And my poor mother, 
she had, she doesn't have a smartphone. She has like a flip phone. And she had to drive that whole way back without any kind of maps, just based on memory, because I had a smartphone with all of the directions. And we didn't know that the directions were going to include picking one of three gravel paths up the mountain and then ideal. hoping you can remember them on the way back. <laughs> so. It was not ideal. Luckily, we had the satellite phone. Your mom also had to text for the first time to, to tell us that yeah, she was Yeah, my mom doesn't okay. text, but she had to text us to let us know that she, like, made it. Because <laughs> the satellite phone only texts. It does not make phone calls, except for SOS. So, yeah. So, there was that. Um, let's see. Amy told you about how she didn't care it was raining. She was super excited, so happy to be there. It's true. Yeah, what you don't see is my face, which says, oh, dear God, what have I done? Like, Daddy regretted a lot of things that first day. I think your mom probably thought we would get back in the car and, like, go home. Because she knew I wanted to get back in the car and go home. Rachel didn't. She was, (laughs) I'm so proud of you. You did great. And actually, it stopped raining Pretty quickly up that first It hour rained hour. just long enough yeah. to get every part of me wet. How about that? Did it? It did. New my socks were wet, my shoes were wet, and because I didn't have my rain gear on and it was oh. in the trunk, I had to get out of the car in pouring rain and put all of my rain gear on. So while I had it on, I like all of my clothes were wet before I got them on. I have no memory of how I got my rain gear on. Fast. <laughs> I think I just I was so excited, you know, the, the adrenaline just you know, overcame me, but I think I just like, yeah, I just hauled it on and then maybe in a lull, actually, I think there was like a little bit of a lull. I think that was when I ran to the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. The bathroom. (laughs) I I ran up the (laughs) The hill. The trees, as we call it at camp. Um, So we hiked that initial mile up Springer and the top was just abandoned. There was no one there. I was really surprised that there was no one there and it seems so much smaller in real life than it does in all of the hiking videos we've ever seen of the top of Springer, where it seems very wide, and there's lots of people, um, because of course the through hikers are hiking in the winter, and there's yeah, tons so of them, true. and there's supposedly vistas at that location. Only if the trees aren't there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if the trees weren't there, you could see vistas. Also, there was one spot where you could look out and you could see clouds the day we hiked it, because it was just so soft in, but, um, but yeah, and then... Uh, we did that for 4.8. It was mostly downhill to get into the shelter the first night, which was nice. Yeah, it was a really easy hike. It was a good first day starter, yeah. especially because we started so late. We didn't get there until like 4, 4.30. Right. Because the drive up the mountain, even though it was only like 15 miles, it took an hour. <laughs> and then we got into camp a little bit early, but we had to learn how to do everything for the first time. You know, we had obviously set up our tents ahead of time, which was smart, um, several times just to check it out and see what we were missing um, for gear. In my case, getting a replacement bar for my tent. Luckily, I had done that, but never mind. It failed on me anyway two days later, so. Um, But it was nice to meet the people that were there at the shelter, and I I didn't record any of the people at the shelter because, you know, when you're just getting to know people, you're unsure of how they will respond to being recorded right away. Um, so, and you don't really want to take people out of that, like, lovely nature ambiance and say, hey, can I take a picture of you or a short video for my vlog, you know, so we did it, but we did meet some, some really wonderful people at that shelter. Um, we met, uh, Tracy and Josh, Mm -hmm. yeah, Tracy and Josh from Texas. They were hilarious and fun to talk to, and we... We thought we would see them again on the trail, but they kept jumping ahead of us. <laughs> they, no, they didn't just jump. They skipped the hard stuff, okay? <laughs> they didn't hike Blood Mountain, and then they didn't hike, like, this thousand, was it thousand foot incline, decline? Oh, Unicoi, yeah. Series yeah. of, like, mountains. They skipped Unicoi, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, but he, he had, you have to do what's fun and what's going to make your trip they, fun, so yes. they did their own thing. They, like, we never caught back up to yeah. them. <laughs> we never caught back up to them, but we kept seeing their entries in all the vlogs, so we knew they were a few days ahead of us. And they were bold. The first mm-hmm. night on the trail, and they were like, no, we're going to sleep in the shelter. And they actually, they were sharing a sleeping area, and they had a mouse, so they weren't in a bag, they just had a quilt. And they had a mouse, like, snuggle with them in the middle of the night. And I was like, hmm. The mice were very cute, but, like, also <laughs> vermin. And they have diseases. Yeah. They did have a really cool sleeping mattress. And it was about four inches thick. And I said, how did you Glorious. get that mattress? How did you blow that up? It would take forever. And what they had was a huge bladder that could also double as a dry bag. And they would Outside. fill it with air. And then they would screw it on to the mattress and then roll the air into the mattress so they could fill it up. 
with only a few of those instead of, you know, hundreds of breaths. So they had a four inch air mattress and I was super jealous of them, especially after that first night on that air mattress. I didn't know how to sleep. Um, you know, I actually kept my, my ozone the whole time. I, I knew I talked, I know I talked about um, possibly upgrading it, but since I upgraded my tent, I thought I'd at least try two full weeks on the ozone and see if I could get used to it. And I did get used to it. I just, I never really loved it. I never got more than four hours of sleep in a row on it. I didn't sleep as well as I possibly could with that that particular mattress, but their mattress was amazing. Another note on the, the pump sacks. Um, those are really good to have even if you don't have as big a mattress just because it puts dry air into your tent instead of like air coming from your mouth yeah. because eventually all of your air mattresses that you blow up by mouth will get bacteria growing inside them. Also, so. they deflate a little bit. So when you blow your air mattress hot, you know, in the afternoon, then you come back to it in the evening, you'll notice it's, it's you know, condensed. So you have to re-blow it again before you can go to sleep. Not all the way, but... Not all the way, but, yeah, it does condense, so... So then um, another group that was at the shelter, but not staying in the shelter, they actually tent nearby like we did, was a, um, a lovely mom and daughter. Uh, and I don't remember either of their names. Um, uh, was it her niece or her daughter? She did... I don't know. I'm we're unsure. not sure. We're unsure. They were cool. And um, they were actually really brave. Um, the, the mom was actually hiking to lose weight so that she could get a knee replacement surgery. And the amount of pain she had to have been in to have done like five miles on knees that need replacing is intense. Mm -hmm. um, and her daughter or niece, we're not, we're not sure, her family, uh, that was there, uh, she was going into what, seventh or eighth grade? Probably eighth grade. Yeah. And she my was, seventh and eighth grade age radar. She was just so fun. I mean, she was like, Heart and soul, so into the hiking, which is great for a teenager to see a teenager out on the trail who's just having such a great time. And you could tell, you know, they weren't moving quickly. They had actually come the wrong way down the trail of 2.8 miles. And so they were supposed to do 0.8 up to the shelter on top of Springer. And instead, they took the Appalachian Trail in the other direction and it went 2.8 down to the shelter. Um, luckily, there was a shelter that close because that could have been a lot worse. But... Um, they, they, they were planning to do the same hike we did the following day to turn around, to go back out to the road, go up Springer and then down Springer. And that was going to be their, their whole hike. But, um, that, you know, they added probably six or seven miles onto their hike that they hadn't planned to do. So they were kind of going with the flow and the daughter was very excited and happy and chill to they, be out in the woods. Also her older son. Um, Sparta was named Sparta and we never met him, but we saw him in all the trail books because I guess he was hiking at like lightning speed. He was cranking um, out like 20 miles a day. So yeah, Sparta, so, wherever you are, if you see this video. <laughs> so but it was fun because we got to see him for the rest of the trip in the log book. Right. So, you know, we never met him, but we met his mom. And she talked about how she had just told him, just go, just, just, <laughs> just, just go. go. You have a leak, just go. And now we know why, because yeah. he was insane. At Slash home awesome. orchard in like five or six days, and it took us twelve mm -hmm. to get there. So, some some of these athletes that go out, the ridge runners, can do incredible miles. Um, granted, not all of them are wearing packs, but still incredible miles. And I think that's about it for the first day. Thank you for staying for the after <laughs> show, and uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, after our next episode too.